Hello and welcome back to A Level Biology Help. Today I'm going to take you through the population genetics section for AQA A Level Biology. Near the end of the video I'll be going through a few exam style questions and explaining their mark schemes. And as always there will be timestamps in the comment section so that you can skip to the different sections in the video if you do not wish to watch the whole thing. Right so let's get started. So this is the content that we are going to cover today. So what is meant by a population, then the concept of a gene pool and allele frequencies, then the Hardy-Weinberg principle to predict allele frequency. So let's begin with the content. So what is meant by a population? Well, species can exist as one or more populations. So if we take the example of humans, you can have a population of humans in London or a population of humans in Sheffield, for example. The definition of a population is a group of organisms of the same species occupying a particular space at a particular time that can potentially interbreed. So a population consists of the same species. So now I'm going to um, teach you about the concept of gene pools and allele frequency. So you might have already heard of these terms already or you might not have. So a gene pool is the total number of genes of every individual in an interbreeding population. So the gene pool is basically every single gene that is present in the population. And obviously, as the name suggests, allele frequency is how often an allele occurs in a population. So an allele with a high allele frequency occurs a lot in a population. So for example, um, if a population has a high allele frequency of cystic fibrosis, then a lot of people in the population have cystic fibrosis. But the question remains, how can we predict, predict allele frequency? Well, the Hardy-Weinberg principle can um, predict allele frequencies. So the Hardy-Weinberg principle, or the Hardy-Weinberg equation, is a math mathematical model which predicts allele frequencies that will not change from generation to generation. So as you can probably tell, the Hardy-Weinberg principle is based on many assumptions. So the main ones are that mating is random, so um, it is not biased towards a specific phenotype. No natural selection occurs, which would change the allele frequency as um, individuals with more um, phenotypes adapted to the environment are selected for. No mutation occurs, which would affect the alleles. No gene flow or genetic drift. We will get onto genetic drift when we talk about the populations and ecosystems chapter. And that the population size is infinite. So the Hardy-Weinberg equation is used to calculate the frequency of genotypes, phenotypes and alleles. And we use this equation, which is, might not quite complicated to you, but it really isn't. So p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1, as 1 is 100% of the population. p equals the frequency of 1, or usually the dominant allele. q means the frequency of the other allele, which is usually the recessive allele. 2pq represents the frequency of a heterozygote. This means that p squared means the frequency of a homozygous dominant individual, and q squared means the frequency of a homozygous recessive individual. So this equation is used to calculate the frequency of a genotype, a phenotype, or a specific allele within a population. So now I'm going to go through a couple of, a couple of examples that I stole from the internet. So here is the first example. In corn, purple kernels are dominant to yellow. A random sample of 100 kernels is taken from a population in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. It is found that 9 kernels are yellow and 91 kernels are, kernels are purple. What is the frequency of a yellow allele in this population? Well, the first step to know is that um, the um, yellow allele is the recessive allele, as it says in the question, the purple kernels are dominant to yellow. And nine kernels are yellow. So this means that um, the nine um, kernels are homozygous recessive, as the yellow allele is recessive. 
However, what we need to do is we need to find the proportion of yellow kernels in the population. So, so we have nine yellow kernels in total with um, the sample containing 100 kernels. So the frequency of yellow kernels in the population is 0 0.09. However, because yellow colour is recessive, we need to um, square root this because the value of 0 0.09 is Q squared. As when the kernels are yellow, this means that they are homozygous recessive. So 0 0.09 is our value for Q squared. So to find the frequency of just one of the yellow alleles, we need to square root 0 0.09. So Q is the frequency of one recessive allele, so the yellow allele. So Q equals the square root of 0 0.09, which is 0 0.3. So our frequency of our yellow allele in the population is 0 0.3, 0 0.3. So now I'm going to go through another example. A population of sheep is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. The allele for white wool, capital W, which is the dominant allele, has an allele frequency of 0.19 and the allele for black wool, lowercase w, has an allele frequency of 0.81. What is the percentage of heterozygous individuals in the population? So now it is asking us about the heterozygous instead of just one allele. So as we saw in the Hardy Weinberg equation, 2pq represents heterozygous. So the first thing that we need to calculate is that the um, presence of the dominant allele, so P, is 0.19, as it says the allele for white wool, capital W, which is the dominant allele, so P, has an allele frequency of 0.19. So P equals 0.19. The next thing we need to do is calculate the frequency of the recessive allele. So I've calculated this as 0.81, as P and Q must equal 1. So 0 0.19 plus 0 0.81 equals 1. So the sum of P and Q must be 1 in all cases. So Q equals 0 0.81. From this, we can figure out the frequency of heterozygotes by doing the sum 2 times the frequency of P times the frequency of Q. So the frequency of heterozygotes means 2 times 0 0.19 times 0 0.81 equals 0 0.31. However, the question is not asking us about the just the frequency of the heterozygous individuals, but the percentage of heterozygous individuals. So to convert this into a percentage, we multiply by 100 to get our final value of 31%. Right, so that is it for the content, and now I'm going to get on to some exam questions. So if I just get my highlighter tool. In cats, males are XY and females are XX, so this follows a similar pattern to humans. A gene on the X chromosome controls fur colour in cats. The allele capital G codes for ginger fur and the allele capital B codes for black fur. These alleles are co-dominant. Heterozygous females have ginger and black patches of fur and their phenotype is described as tortoise shell. So the thing to notice in these questions is that it crosses over a lot with the inheritance chapter. So if you haven't watched that video and you're not familiar with those concepts, please go check that out now. I'll provide a link to that in the corner. So the first question asks us, explain what is meant by co-dominant alleles. So as we said in the inheritance video, co-dominant alleles are when both alleles are expressed in the phenotype equally. You don't need to go into much more detail as this question is only one, worth one mark. The second question asks us, male cats with tortoiseshell phenotype do not usually occur. Explain why. So the question says males are XY, so they only carry one X chromosome. And the gene for the fur colour occurs on the X chromosome. And the tortoiseshell phenotype is express when the um, individual is heterozygous but males can't be heterozygous because they only carry one X chromosome. So this is what I've written in my answer. Male cats can't be heterozygous. You don't need to go into more detail as again it is one, only a one mark question. So let's look at the mark scheme. 
So the first question says both alleles are expressed or shown in the phenotype. We wrote that, so we would get the mark for that question. Also, it accepts both alleles contribute to the phenotype, so you can write that. However, neutral, both alleles are dominant. So this is still technically correct, but the examiner prefers it if you do not write this. So let's look at the next one. So the marking point comes from only possess one allele or the Y chromosome does not carry the allele or gene. Or you could write it can't be heterozygous. We wrote that male cats can't be heterozygous, so we would get the mark for this question. Also, it accepts only possess one gene for the condition, but it, the examiner prefers it if you refer to alleles. Also, it says neutral, they only have one X chromosome. So this is still right, but it is not specific enough answer the question. So let's move on to the next question. So here I've just copied the text from the first part of the question. So the question says a tortoise shell female was crossed with a black male. Use a genetic diagram to show all the possible genotypes and the ratio of phenotypes expected in the offspring of this cross. And it says here use X capital G to indicate the allele capital G on an X chromosome and use X capital B to indicate the allele capital B on an X chromosome. So as it says use a genetic di diagram we need to draw one out to get the full range of marks. So the first step in this question is to figure out the genotype of the parents. So the first thing that you need to figure out which will be easier is the genotype of the male. As males um, can't be heterozygous, as they only carry one X chromosome, then the um, allele that they carry is their phenotype. So the genotype of the male must be X capital B Y, as the allele capital B codes for black fur, as the question says. And the genotype for the tortoiseshell female must be heterozygous. As it says in the question, heterozygous females have ginger and black patches of fur and their phenotype is described as tortoiseshell. So the next step in the genetic diagram is to draw out the gametes. So these will be X capital G, then X capital B, and then the gametes from the father would be X capital B and Y. So the next step is we need to cross these gametes in a Punnett square. I'm not going to write it here, I'm going to do it here because it's not enough space. So here we have our genetic cross with all our possible pheno genotypes. So this um, cross answers our first part of the question. So the genotypes of offspring are X capital G, X capital B, X capital B, X capital B, X capital G, capital G Y, X capital B Y. So now you need to figure out what the phenotypes are. So the phenotypes of this genotype is a tortoiseshell female, as it is the same as the mother. Then we have a black female, as it is homozygous recessive for the capital B allele. Homozygous dominant, sorry. We have a ginger male here, as it carries the capital G allele. And then a black male, as it carries a capital B allele which close to black fur and the ratio of phenotypes is one to one to one to one as we have one of each phenotype in our cross so mark point one um, is for the genotype of the offspring we got all of these right so we'll get the mark also it accepts equivalent genotypes where the Y chromosome is shown as a dash so you don't actually have to put the letter Y, you can just represent this as a dash, or you don't have to write it at all. However, it rejects not writing the X's at all, or the Y's at all, as this contravenes the rubric. So it completely um, goes against the idea of sex linkage. So if you don't um, write the X's or the Y's, at all in your answer, you cannot get any marks at all for the question, even if your phenotypes and your ratios was right. So mark point two, so the features. Tortoiseshell female, black female, ginger male and black male. We got all of these in our answer, so we would get our second mark. 
and the ratio is 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. So we would get all three marks for this question. So it says here for 2 and 3, so mark points 2 and 3, award one mark for following phenotypes. Torsha shell, black, ginger in any order with the ratio 1 to 2 to 1 in any order. How, because, um, so you can only get two marks maximum if you do not refer to the sex. Also, it says allow one mark for answers in which mark points 1, 2 and 3 are not awarded but show parents with correct genotypes. So if um, you don't get the phenotypes or the ratios right but you get the genotypes right, obviously you can only get one mark. Also, for mark point 3, it says neutral percentages and fractions. So the, it still is technically right, however, the, the examiner might not give you a mark as a question as for a ratio. Also, it accepts equivalent ratios, for example, for 1 to 1 to 1 to 1, allow 0 0.25 to 0 0.25 to 0 0.25 to 0 0.25. But it is much easier to write 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. Let's look at this next question, which uses the Hardy-Weinberg equation. So polydactyly in cats is an inherited condition in which cats have extra toes. The allele for polydactyly is dominant. In a population, 19% of cats had extra toes. Use the Hardy-Weinberg equation to calculate the frequency of the recessive allele for this gene in this population. Show your working. So this question is asking us to calculate the frequency of um, Q. So the first step that we can take is to figure out how much of the population is homozygous recessive. So to do this, we need to figure out um, how the percentage. So to do this, we need to take away 19 from 100 to get our homozygous recessive individuals. So 100 minus 19 is 81%. So 81% of individuals are homozygous recessive. So this means that 0.81 means Q squared. So in order to get Q, which is our frequency of the recessive allele, we need to square root the value for Q squared. So the value for Q squared is 0.81. So our value for Q is the square root of 0.81. So the value for the frequency of the recessive allele is 0.9. So we can conclude that our answer is 0.9. So the mark scheme says correct answer of 0 0.9 means two marks. We wrote our answer as 0 0.9, so we would get all two marks for the question. However, here it says incorrect answer, but shows Q squared equals 0 0.81. You can get one mark. So if you don't square root at the end, you can still get a mark. Also here it says note 0.9% means one mark. So if you put this, you can get one mark as well. So this is the last question that we are going to look at today. Some cat breeders select with polydactyly. So they purposely interbreed cats with polydactyly. Describe how this would affect the frequencies of the homozygous genotypes of this gene in their breeding populations over time. So we need to describe in this question the frequencies of the homozygous genotypes, so homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive. So polydactyly is caused by a dominant allele. So if the cat breeders are selecting for polydactyly, this means that the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype will increase, but the homozygous recessive genotype will decrease. So this is what I've written. Homozygous dominant increases and homozygous recessive decreases. So let's look at our mark scheme. So the mark scheme says, exactly what we have written, so homozygous dominant increases and homozygous recessive decreases. So we would get the mark for this question. Right, that is all I want to say for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, big or small, please leave them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them and I will see you in the next video.